Yeah, I'm going to slow you down a little bit. Um, okay. So, good afternoon. Um, don't know if anyone, well, a lot of people here don't know. So, I, I used to be the coordinator for, I was the coordinator for the Caribbean Marine Atlas Phase 1, which wasn't really called Phase 1 at the time, it was just called Caribbean Marine Atlas. So, I'm just going to go through quickly the, a little bit of a background into the, into the project itself, um, how far we got, what lessons we learned along the way, and some of the, the ways that we were thinking about how the project was going to develop um, in this initial phase. So yeah, some background on the CMA, and have a kind of a, a quick overview of how we identified some regional priority uh, coastal zone management issues in you know, the initial phases of the project. Um, some of the project activities and some of the lessons learned. So, when we were conceptualizing the CMA, it was really um, to really feed into uh, integrated coastal zone management at a regional and a national level. That's where we found thought the real impact was going to come, and and it was all geared towards effective policy making, because it was it was very clear that you know for, at every stage of the policy cycle you need data. You need this information to actually drive uh, the policy cycle in a responsible way. And uh, we figured that there was just not enough of that um, information being injected into the policy cycle at both a regional and a national level. Um, Transboundary issues, so within the, the first phase of the project really focused more on the Eastern Caribbean and as well as some of the northern parts of the Caribbean, Cuba and Jamaica. And um, in, in that grouping, it's mainly a body called CARICOM, um, as well as some other uh, grouping, smaller groupings. But the transboundary issues that these different groupings have to manage and have to, have to look at requires this regional scale data and information to actually drive some of their processes as well. And we all know that you know, effective uh, communication with decision makers requires data and information uh, to be used, or useful data and information. Also, in terms of uh, data sharing, you really need to look at uh, that. Make sure that data is available, it's easily available, and it's available from multiple fields because that's what actually drives the actual integrated uh, part of the integrated coastal zone management. And that we have to really understand the quality of information to be able to use it effectively and to use it for the right purposes, for the right reasons, and make sure that it's robust and uh, it's applicable when the the outputs of this data information are produced. And it has to be easy to find this information, both the input data and the output data as well. And of course, you need some kind of like effective data management so that you can communicate uh, better with stakeholders, get the information out. And um, when you have a larger uh, group of people who can actually access your information, then you have more of an impact from, from the work that you do. So that was all kind of where we were thinking about when the development of the CMA. So how it actually came about uh, back in 2006, I think it was, there was an IOC committee meeting. Um, my director, she looked at or had a glimpse at the African Marine Atlas and you know, this would be a great thing. And she could definitely see the kind of clear benefits that this kind of system would have for the Caribbean region if it was applied um, on that regional scale. And you know, it would facilitate a regional uh, collaboration and improve decision making, capacity building, improve data access. All of these things could be, could be gained from this type of system. And that was the, um, the kind of impetus for the project moving forward. So back in 2007, we had an inception meeting, basically a, um, to kind of get a better understanding of what the, the region's needs would be. Um, uh, for for this kind of project, yeah, we all look so young. It's very nice. Um, so yeah, we only brought together six countries initially. We always knew it was going to be a small project, and there's going to be scope for expansion. And uh, so the workshop goals, I'm going to go through all of them, but it's basically to let everybody know what we're trying to accomplish with the with the project. Try to identify the national coastal zone management uh, arrangements. Different countries have different uh, ways of set up. Some countries actually have coastal zone management agencies like Barbados. Others, they're actually coastal zone management kind of um, uh, activities are managed through fisheries divisions. So we're just trying to find out um, how those mechanisms work and to identify the key priority areas that the Atlas should focus on in its initial stages. 
So we basically did a, an issues identification exercise. It's kind of hard to see everything, but basically we tried to identify which areas um, uh, were most uh, identified as being high priority, or so which uh, types of uh, themes. So from habitat degradation, pollution, natural hazards, and the different um, sub subcategories within these larger categories. Asked each 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 participating country to identify if this was you know a, a, a local scale, regional scale issue, if it was a high priority, medium priority, low priority, and we grouped all that information together, and eventually you, you generate a, a weight for each of those issues, this, this column over here. And from that, we identified the kind of highest priority issues um, that this uh, body of uh, participants came up with. And from that exercise, we identified that the regional priority issues, for the main part, were, of course, uh, marine habitats, so coral reefs, seagrass beds, mangroves, and the overexploitation of these resources, including fisheries resources, uh, the vulnerability to natural hazards and the information related to natural hazards and vulnerability uh, beaches in terms of beach erosion, um, uh, beach loss, habitat loss, and of course land-based sources of marine pollution, which is um, which has of course a knock-on effect on the marine resources. And then we also identified some regional scale or that uh, issues that affected each nation with, uh, within that grouping, those highest priority issues in terms of data access. And it was found that during the course of that meeting that most or, or all of the information that you need to develop some of the indicators that we were trying to look at was available at the national level. But it was usually hard to access. And that was a, a, almost across the board um, issue because it would be in different institutions, uh, being research institutions versus government institutions and actually accessing the information was difficult. And in terms of data management, uh, data management issues across the board were that quality control was definitely not one of the key components of uh, data workflows. Quality control was not uh, inherent in different organizations. We had no established metadata schemes. Um, some people use different departments use different things, ISO, Dublin Core, WGET. Um, the, um, the USGS, and then that, of course, across the board, lack of lack of resources. So not enough people to do um, the work that's required to be done for data management and for data collection, and a lack of resources in terms of equipment necessary to manage this, this data and information. So to try to address those issues, um, we as part of, part of the project that we actually, the, the, the capacity building activities that we actually got funding for um, by the IODE, uh, we did a series of courses um, in both data management and in actual Atlas development specific courses. So I'm going to go into this a little bit more in like a later presentation later on in the week, but so we did ocean data management courses, data mining courses, database management courses all to give us the actual uh, ability to, to be able to harvest data, process it in the right way, get it into analysis in the right form, and then be able to publish this, this information. We also learned how to develop analysis from scratch, so actually code for the development of analysis. Um, but yeah, I'll begin this later on in the week. And the different technologies that can be used to develop to publish information, uh, geospatial information. So you can see that for the, the training for this, initial phase or for the first phase of the CMA was all geared towards capacity building. The, that, that was the kind of the largest focus and it was capacity building for um, at a national scale to develop marine atlases or to contribute to the development of a regional marine atlas. So it was very capacity uh, development focused. Um, whether or not that was the, the right approach is, is up for debate, but it did definitely help us know that this, that this type of technology was out there, that you could use these tools and, and, and develop analysis of your own. And I think that was a, a valuable lesson, but whether or not it was you know, sufficient to, to kind of really reach the goals of the project, uh, that's, that's up for debate and might need a different direction uh, for this second phase. We did several stakeholder engagement uh, type activities. So we had national uh, atlas development workshops in different countries, and three countries by the time of the end of the project. 
So we would actually go to the national stakeholders in each country, ask them, you know, what your needs are, how would you like your national atlas to develop. Um, we contribute con contribute data to this project, and that way we actually kind of spread the word about the CMA and the national atlas projects that were um, going to take part underneath the CMA, as well as um, kind of promoted buy-in uh, for the project. And then in terms of finding out what people really needed at the national level, there was also uh, national coordinating agency surveys and institutional client surveys as well. So just to go through the a summary of the kind of challenges, lessons learned, <coughs> etc. One of the biggest areas is that because of limited resources, there's very little specialization at the national level when it comes to the development of uh, marine analysis or just marine data management as a whole. Almost everybody who deals with marine data management, it's one component of what their job is. And it might not be even a very major component of what their job is. So this lack of specialization means that usually marine data management tasks and activities take a pretty low priority um, on your daily activities, what you have to do in your job. So that, that limited uh, capacity to have like specialization in that area, that definitely affects how much you can get done if you're relying on national on people at the national level to actually contribute to the development of the analysis. Data, data gathering, that's fairly straightforward. If you're asking people to actually help develop, manage, and maintain an atlas, that specialization, um, that lack of specialization is a serious impediment to that. Um, the, there is very limited, uh, in terms of, the, except at a kind of a, at like a institutional memory, uh, level, there's very little transparency in terms of what different agencies have. You may know what a different agency has because you've had to deal with them in the past. But in terms of those agencies publishing what type of information they produce, um, having that information accessible, or the catalogs accessible, that's, um, it's very limited, very limited at this stage. Um, when we actually came to the development of the actual atlas itself, um, because you know, again, back to the specialization part, back to the fact that the limited resources, there is very little time or resources uh, given to the actual, to allow people to actually be able to contribute to the development of their national and their regional marine analysis. So you might tell your boss that, you know, it's part of the project that everybody signed on to, that you need to spend some time and develop this atlas, but it's low priority. You will not have the time to develop it um, in a way that uh, really contributes to its actual successful completion. And of course, that, that follows on to the atlas preparation task. And of course, there's because at the institutional level, there's never been a, well, at least in the agencies that I've um, either looked at both nationally and regionally, uh, because data distribution has never been a really key core component of a lot of these institutions, the, the actual background uh, requirements for the, for the workflows to actually be able to uh, produce um, information, high quality information, deliver it to stakeholders uh, at, a, at an institutional level, it's just not there. So yeah, we don't have the actual um, processes in place to be able to, to manage a lot of the information that's, that's actually collected. So you collect a lot of information, but how are you managing it, how are you distributing it, how are you processing it and making it publicly available? Um, that's always been difficult. And of course, um, which I'm, I'm guessing is a, is a problem across the board, but Staff changes, especially at, um, at institutions where people are not specialized or you know, a job requirement isn't GIS specialist. It's just somebody who happened to be interested in GIS who is doing that, that task in their position as marine researcher. If that person changes, that, that office loses its GIS capacity. And it's as simple as that because it's not their core job. So any kind of staffing changes can have a massive impact on the actual successful completion of a project. Um, in terms of the technology challenges that we, that we had over the course of the project, um, we changed the, the back-end technology of the Atlas uh, twice, actually, but for, for, yeah, we actually changed it twice, but we kind of stuck on the, the last one, which was GeoServer. We, we, we started with a map server, we changed to GeoServer, basically, and that kind of slowed us down in terms of the actual development of the project. Um, not massively, but that was one of the delays. Uh, teaching people from, from scratch how to code 
especially people who do not have a, a, a computer a computer background, a, a programming background, is very difficult. It's, uh, it is lear learning a new language, and that was definitely a, a major challenge in terms of getting people, giving people the capability to actually work on their atlases um, in their own time. You basically have to learn all these skills from scratch, and that's not straightforward. So in terms of the kind of uh, needs that we identify um, for uh, both the stakeholders and the developers, so in terms of the people who actually want to get information out of a particular atlas or out of a national atlas system, uh, and the organizations which are going to host these systems, what they need is, what we, what we found that they needed was additional data collection capacity, so that, that, that extends to both data collection and data processing. Uh, data management capacity in terms of keeping this information in databases and well updated and, and uh, well processed. Uh, the ability to search uh, through this information from different departments in an easy way and visualize the information that of course uh, and download the information was of course a, a readily identified need. And data policies, data sharing policies. There are very few departments um, in the region or governments in the region that have well defined data sharing policies. It's, uh, it's just not a, a typical type of um, a policy you'll find. And I think that until that's well established, you're gonna, always going to have uh, difficulties in getting information between departments. I mean, it's always going to be a challenge. So until uh, most of the stuff is done ad hoc, is done between technical people at a certain level, but until there's a requirement to share data between departments that's enshrined in some law or regulation, you're always going to struggle to get information um, out of departments. Um, in, some of, in some of the countries within the region. And we also have to really try to integrate um, spatial data information within the policy assessment, policy development, um, uh, policy evaluation uh, parts of the policy cycle because until it can be shown that this information is critical to make a particular decision that's like well based in, in science then there's not going to be the push towards developing these systems at a national level or towards developing the capacity of the people working at these agencies in geospatial data management. And what we did find in some cases, especially for, those, for some of those national stakeholder workshops, was that unless you could identify the, I wouldn't say financial, but um, the like a, a very key benefit, like as in how this, how participating in this project will reduce some of my workload or enable me to divert my budget to different areas, then people were less interested in, um, in actually taking part. Because resources are limited, you really do need to try to identify ways that this, this system will make people's lives easier and it will reduce their budget or enable them to, to divert their budget to different areas. That's, that's, that's a critical component. In terms of uh, people who were actually developing the atlases, so there were basically a, a core group of four or five uh, people who were actually doing the coding for the development of the atlases. Um, we definitely needed better training in, in web coding, um, in, in, in programming languages for the web, but there's an asterisk there because, you know, I am not sure that's, that's where we should be focusing our efforts. I mean, we're not by background um, uh, computer um, programmers, we are scientists for the most part, so do we want to be spending our time here or doing other tasks and having that part of the, of the activity farmed out to somebody else like a consultant. Uh, in terms of the functionality of, of the atlases, not just in terms of the coding, but the, well, what you can do with a, with a particular atlas system, we definitely needed uh, more kind of input into the, the, the possibilities or what you could, what kind of functionality you could include in your atlas. Uh, in terms of the national atlas development tasks and the regional atlas development tasks, you really need a lot, a lot more data management um, and preparation support. So taking some of these uh, databases from, you know, Excel spreadsheets and converting them into um, uh, spatial, spatial files or taking a lot of the information coming out of things like the World Ocean Atlas and, and converting them into rasters that we could use, that's a very time-consuming, long process. So uh, we definitely need additional support in that area. 
And the ability to automate uh, a lot of the, uh, the data management tasks, if we had more support in that area, it might have gone a long way. Because a lot of these, uh, there, there are a lot of international agencies, national bodies as well, NOAA, et cetera, that produce information, put it in a um, net CDF format, and then it's a matter of getting information from that format to something that's digestible within our system. And if that task could be automated on a, on a, on a regular basis, then it takes away a lot of the hassle from managing this system. And also, I mean, this is definitely an area where ICANN, I think, um, is really going to play a critical role, um, or any of the other um, um, initiatives in the, in the area, or at this meeting, in terms of uh, data sharing and distribution policy development. If there are any key insights in how it's been done in different areas, places with like similar uh, types of um, situations, small and developing states, limited resources, how, what's the best way to go about developing uh, data, data sharing and distribution policies and how to get that really integrated into the, um, uh, the workflows of, of different agencies. So that's it. So um, that was just a quick background. I'm going to get more into the, to the actual, some of the uh, capacity building activities that we did uh, later on in the week. Uh, but if there are any questions, uh, just let me know. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you very much.